Hola. Uh, buenos dias. Me llamo Mike Herschel. Hablo es pico español. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, <laughs> thank you. I always play that song uh, before I present because it pumps me up. And it's called Every Day I'm Drupalin. And if you listen to the words, it's, it's so, so awesome. Um, I guess I should be able to hit the button on my computer. So, my name is Mike Herschel. Um, and I, I want to I start off by telling a little bit about myself. Um, I'm 37 years old. I've been working with Drupal about 10 years. Um, today is my three-year anniversary at Lullabot, which, yeah, I know, which is so cool because I'm kind of talking. I'm going to tell you a funny story coming up. And um, I love what I do, and I love the Drupal community. I love the web development community in general, you know. And so I want to... Uh, I want to kind of talk about like how how I got involved and how honestly we can get involved, and um, I, I I I attend and present at a lot of Drupal camps and conferences, and I had the idea for this talk at uh, DrupalCon Los Angeles, which I think was in 2015. And did Dries know? So Dries Boytart was talking, and uh, <clears throat> he was talking a little bit about. Um, oh, I have a new puppy. <laughs> yeah. he, he was talking about this website back in the day. It's called it's kerneltrap.org. And um, so back in, I don't know, 2002, uh, this website was very popular among open source enthusiasts, like Linux and like any, anything cool like that. And so it would get, link, it would get linked to by slashdot.org, and has anybody ever visited that? You know what that is? It's, it's, it's a po it was a very popular website back then, so when it would get linked to, this website would crash. It would be overwhelmed by all the traffic. So Dries did not know this person, but he emailed this person kind of out of the blue, and he said, hey, you know, try Drupal. If you run Drupal, it will never crash. You know, so Drupal back then was nothing. It was like one of many PHP content management systems. And um, so, you know, Dries emailed this guy out of the blue and he said, try Drupal. So they struck up a conversation and so they switched it over to Drupal. And the first time it got linked to it, crashed, you know. But at that point, um, <coughs> excuse me, at that point, um, they fixed it, you know, they fixed it, and, and, they, and they put in the throttle module, if you remember what the throttle module is that disables stuff when you get a lot of traffic. And, um, but what happened is that really got Drupal's momentum going, you know, Drupal was talked about on Slashdot, it got more, contributor, more contributors, more people. And if Dries had not emailed that guy out of the blue, in like 2002, 2003, we would not be here. You know, I would not be here. We would, we would be working with, I don't know, whatever that one is. <laughs> you know, um, so I, 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 think, I think that's like really powerful and that's kind of what I want to talk about. And I want to talk about like some stories on how I did that and, and some friends. So I have this friend right here. <coughs> His name is Scott. He's an asshole. And I can, I can say that because he's an old high school friend, and, and it, the reason why I call him that is because he wins lots of contests. Like, this, this man wins so many contests. He's won cars. He has won guitars. He doesn't play guitar. He's won backstage passes to concerts, concert tickets, and all that type of stuff. And, and I see this, I'm like, oh man, I hate that guy. And I, I, I realized, though, what he does is he, he enters a lot of contests. He puts himself in a position that he can actually win these contests. So even though he, it seems to us like we win a lot, um, or, or that he wins a lot, he just enters a lot. And I'm not, I'm not telling you to go play the lottery, because that's a bad idea. But... Um, 
put yourself in a position to win is, is super important. So the way that worked for me is I used to work at um, an, a company called the Florida High School Athletic Association. And it was a small company. It was like 30, 30 people. I was the only technical person there. And um, I did everything from installing printers to working on the Drupal website to working with like Microsoft Exchange and Active Directory and stuff like that. And I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because I didn't have anyone who I could talk technical to, you know? So what I ended up doing was I ended up um, starting my own communities. Like there was not a Drupal community where I live, so I started one. And through that, I met a lot of good friends and I went to Florida Drupal Camp. I started volunteering at Florida Drupal Camp. I met even more friends. Um, I uh, eventually started a front-end developer meetup and uh, I met even more friends, and that, those connections enabled me to be where I am today, you know, which I'm, I'm working for what I consider to be like one of the, the coolest companies ever with, with great people, you know? And I, I think that's pretty cool. So about three years ago, um, I applied for Lullabot, right? And I have this video. Let me see if, I, if we can get it to play. Lullabot makes you do an application video. Um, let me see if this works here. Nope. Um, so this is me in my Lullabot application video, basically saying, hey, I'm Mike. I can walk and talk and dance. And I would like to work with you. And... Um, you know, this is me, you know? Um, so I did this email, or this video, maybe around Christmas 2013, and I, I applied, and I, I, got this, I, got a, I got a reply back from Lullabot pretty quickly. And I said, hey, we want to interview you, you know? So I'm like, yes, yes. And I, uh, so I went for the interview. I thought the interview went pretty, pretty, pretty well. And... Um, I, uh, but I didn't hear back, so I would email, and I'd be like, hey, what's up? You know, did I get this job? Uh, we're still waiting. I don't know what's going to happen, you know? And um, so eventually, after sending multiple emails, I figured, well, they just don't want me, but they don't want to tell me no and stuff like that. And so I saw this tweet go out um, from Lullabot maybe about two months later, and it said, hey, we're looking for front-end developers. And I was like, you assholes, <laughs> you know, I, I applied for you. So I sent this email and I said, hey, I saw that uh, you guys posted this position that I applied for. <laughs> Don't forget about me. And um, I, I received a response back and the response said, you know, this came maybe like two days later. It said, thanks for reaching out. Let's interview again. And things happened really quickly. But um, the reason this is important is because, like, if I would never sent that email, I would not be where I was right now. You know, if I, like, a, a lot of people would kind of say, hey, they just didn't want me, you know, and I'm not going to email them. And I was... I, I took a position, I'm, I'm going to keep on bothering them until they say, go away. And uh, it, it paid off, for me at least, not for them. <laughs> um, yeah, so, it, you know, doing that type of stuff is difficult because it puts you in a vulnerable position. You know, it, it puts you in a position where you can be, you can be made to feel... Um, like worthless, that you're not worthy, you know? And, and, and so you don't want to embarrass yourself. But um, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's hard to do that, but it's important to reach out even if you are going to get, you know, declined or said no. And, and I, I, I think that's super important. So 
I, uh, I, I have a story where I went to this conference. It was called Web Design Day, and it was in Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania in the U.S. And there was this person who I really admire, and, and, and she used to be a Drupal contributor. And, uh, but, but now she talks mainly about front end, you know. So I, I, I watched her, and I ended up going to lunch with this group of people, and she was there. So I went up to her and I said, hey, you know, I'm Mike. I really enjoy what you do. Thanks for all you do. And she gave me this look like that. And then she kind of rolled her eyes. <laughs> and I was, I was kind of upset. I was like, well, that's not nice, you know. I, uh, but I thought about it. And sometimes you get rejected. Sometimes this person can look at you and say, hey, I don't want to even know you. Um, the, she could have been having a bad day, you know. She might be really nice, I don't know. But uh, it's important not to let that get to you to, I don't know, um, to, to, to get you down and, and to give up. So... Um, Social networking, like online social networking, is I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer in that. And, and there's a difference between what's called open social networks and closed social networks. So a closed social network is where everybody is very similar, where, like, say if you only know Drupal people or web developers or you're all members of, like, the same religion, church or political party or something like that. And everything you know kind of turns into an echo chamber where you're hearing the same views coming from everywhere. And um, I read this article, that I, uh, an open social network is, is kind of opposite of that where you have multiple views coming in and you have, you have ways to reach outside of your kind of general sphere. Um, I read this article, and the, and the article um, said, the biggest predictor of career success is having an open social network. And, and so I'm a big believer that. I, th I think Twitter is pretty good with that, because Twitter, you can reach out to people who you don't know. Um, you, can, you can follow people who don't follow back and still hear what they have to say. Uh, I'm a believer in following people who I don't share views with, you know, so I might follow some, someone that's more conservative than I just so I can understand where they're coming from. Or I might follow someone that's big into WordPress, even though I don't develop WordPress, or that does like Microsoft technologies or stuff like that. T because great ideas can come from anywhere. And in addition to that, you can leverage this network for your own personal development in careers and making friends and stuff like that. There's so many people who I've, who I've met uh, through like, events like this and I, you know, we follow each other on Twitter and by the next time we see each other, we feel like we know each other and I, I think that's kind of neat too. Um, I have this story. Um, <coughs> when, I, when I first got hired at Lullabot, I did the uh, Sci-Fi Networks website and I did a lot of front-end transformations, like animations and stuff. Does anyone know who Paul Irish is? I'm not seeing anyone. So Paul, uh, all right, thank you. <laughs> Paul Irish, he works uh, for Google on the uh, Chrome web browser team. And he does uh, a lot of, like, performance, uh, you know, I don't know, performance, uh, anal anal analyzing websites for performance and optimizing Chrome for performance, and he talks about it, he blogs about it, he writes like a lot of the developer tools and, and stuff like that. So one morning, um, he sent out this tweet, and, it, and he, was, he was basically just kind of uh, auditing websites for performance. So I, uh, I sent him a tweet back. I'm like, hey, check out this website, you know? The, and, and I'm think, and so in, in the meantime, I'm, I'm thinking, like, this is kind of scary. And I, I, I messaged my friend, and he replied back to me. And, and he said, uh, okay, 
should I do the mobile or the desktop? And I told him to do the desktop because that's where all the animations were. And meanwhile, I messaged my friend on Slack. He's like, Mike, you're about to find out how much you really suck. And um, so he, after about like five minutes go by, and, and he basically said, nice job, <laughs> you know? And that was, that was kind of cool. I got to rub the salt in my friend's wound, if you know what that means, to kind of, I don't know, have a little, this is me back then. <laughs> and uh, so he said, like, nothing stands out at desktop even while emulating, you know? Like, that's like a friggin' seal of approval. And I have another GIF here. Do you know Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? That's what um, I'm going to leave that up there for a bit because it's just a cool, cool, uh, Jeff. So I, I, read, the, I read another article uh, not too long ago, um, and it, it talked about being a wallflower. Do you, does everybody know what a wallflower is? So it, it's an it's a English term, in, in Ameri- American English term, where... Um, if, if you go to a party and you know the people who are shy and they just like stay next to the wall and watch everybody, so, so that's, they call those wallflowers, right? And, and, and they talk about like how wallflowers don't make friends because they, it's, it, because they don't get up and have those chances to bump into people. And, and they talk a little bit about how making friends and connections happen. Um, one of the interesting things I saw th- that I read was if, if you're in a place where you want to meet friends, say a Drupal camp or a bar or something like that, stand in the middle so people can bump into you, you know, or like stand by the bar so people have to pass by you. And you might strike up a conversation. Um, there was another study where, where it talked about college students, you know, for like university students, and when they go into their dormitories, how they make friends. It, and uh, the summary of the story was the ones, n- the, the people who lived near the exits of the dormitories had more friends because people would exit and enter the dormitories and they would meet people through that. And I, I thought that was really interesting. And I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of saying that because, you know, right now, if anyone's new to the community, get out and kind of meet people and put yourself in that center position or near the exit or near the bar or something like that. Um, this has helped me develop friendships and advance my career and get up and give crappy presentations with crappy GIFs. And, um, you know, uh, it's important to get out and blog and, and go attend meetups like this and like smaller meetups and to volunteer. Like I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a big believer in like volunteering for, uh, I, I'm an organizer for Florida Drupal Camp and like the, the amount of work that the organizers put into this is just very, very amazing. And so I, 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 I'm going to end on this one phrase and it's, it's basically if, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You know, have you, has anyone ever heard that? Is that a Spanish thing? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of interesting. And uh, it's, it's important to be smart enough to speak up. And that's, that's kind of it. That's, that's what I have. Short and sweet. Um, uh, thank you. <clears throat> I have uh, lots of other funny stories for the bar later, if anybody... <laughs> wants to hang out, and yeah. Thank you. Um, my question is, might be a little bit philosophical, but... Uh, mm-hmm. It's a philo- philosophical... Exactly, so it's, it suits the session. Uh, my question is, should you look up to people? Yes. I, I mean, I look up to so many people. I look up to... Uh, so, I, I have an interesting story from Lullabot. Um, does everybody know uh, Nate Haug, a quick sketch? Uh, he's a prominent Drupal developer, and um, he, uh, he, he's just really awesome. So, so he works with me at Lullabot. When I, when I first started at Lullabot, I, I had this question, and, and, and so my, uh, my supervisor said, hey, reach out to Nate and ask him this question. I was like, oh, Nate Haug, I don't know. He doesn't even know who I am. I don't want to bother him. And uh, so that was that. 
Lullabot goes on these yearly retreats where we kind of meet each other, we have some beers, we hang out around a campfire. And so I got to do that with him several months later. And I realized that he was the nicest person. You know, he's super nice. And even if you ask him what you think is a dumb question, he will, he will answer it like very honestly and really nice. And so I, I look up to so many people some people in this audience, you know, and um, yeah, it's important to have like web developer heroes. Sorry, the, the reason why I asked is because when you do look up to people, you can appreciate people, but when you look up to them, you might actually be limited by that fact to actually approach them. If you feel too nervous about it yeah. or you feel too like someone is way up there, you don't want to talk to them. So. Yeah, that was my situation and I, uh, I don't have much advice except for do it anyway. <laughs> Get out there and try it. You know, I, I, I good advice. Yeah, I talked to I, I talked about that uh, conference where I went to, and the lady like rolled her eyes at me. Sometimes there's going to be people who might be assholes or not having a good day, and they don't want to meet you. But I, whatever. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, thank you so much, Mike. Thank you.